I didn't choose the Faha life. The Faha life chose me. And it better be choosing you too, sis. Y'all, I was just struggling today. I don't know what was going on. It was too much. I couldn't even get my hair right. The gel was turning white. But I had to get this video for y'all by any means necessary. So if you say anything about my hair, you will be blocked. Let's get into it. see this you see how this faja opens up this faja opens up because it doesn't have a zipper on the crouch i haven't seen anybody talk about this but y'all need to be buying this faja okay opens up like this so much and i know y'all are like towards my closet today i'm also going to be putting on my faja showing y'all the best fajas to purchase you got your surgery now what this your faja is your life so got your pen got your paper let's get right into it First things first, you're going to be wearing this faja. This faja is going to be your skin, okay? You're going to be wearing this faja almost 24-7 for three months. Some doctors have different whatever, different policies or whatever, but your skin, when you get liposuction, let's go to the fundamentals because I need y'all to understand why a faja is so important. When you get liposuction, you're, you're sucking out the fat, right? So you have your skin, you got the fat, you got your muscle. I've talked about this in one of my other videos. Be sure to look at the playlist if you want to see more about BBL videos. So when you're sucking out liposuction, what they do is they put in fluid because fat is not solid. Like fat is not like liquidy, right? Fat is, is fat, but it's not liquidy. So they have to mix up a solution, put that, pump that into your body, to suck out the fat so when you get the fat sucked out you got muscle then you got skin and you got all this fluid in between now compressing is going to be so important post-surgery the, re the only reason why I don't have my faja on right now is because I'm going to put my faja on in this video for y'all because I just took it off but compressing is so important because your skin has detached from your muscle because of the fluid and because I'm sucking out that fat and it takes 12 weeks for your skin to detach properly, perfectly back to your muscle as if you have not had surgery before. And even after that, your body will go through some swelling and compressing will or seven for three months. And then after three months, you can wear eight to 12 hours a day. Um, rule of thumb, as you see in my surgery vlog, I'm not sure if I got the nurse saying this or not, but you are to wear your fajas 24 hours a day but of course you have to you got to get a massage and you got to shower and everything in between so the rule of thumb right when you're getting out of surgery is to not have your faja not on for more than two hours you can have a two hour break without your faja but after that two hours sis you need to put your faja right back on so i'm here to talk about some of the best fajas my fajas are like they literally hang right here <laughs> they hang right here which is why like i'm by my door um my favorite fajas i got from pretty girl fajas and i will say i have a couple of fajas here i don't typically like the ones that have the zipper this is the one i'm going to be putting on for y'all today because i have clothing on so i need a bigger faja to put on this is a faja that i got through the surgery company and i feel like y'all probably see a lot of fajas like this a lot of girlies that sell fajas or have body contouring um businesses they sell fajas that look just like this this faja did so like it, it did its purpose and it does its purpose but i will say opt into getting a faja that does not have a zipper at the crouch because if you're a taller girly or if your torso is not like the normal person's torso then sometimes the zipper can cut up your your cootie cat you can almost zip your cootie cat it, it can cut up your your booty crack just to avoid that get a faja without a zipper and i will be showing y'all the difference um a faja without a zipper also compresses that lower like fupa area too better than a faja with the zipper the faja with the zipper you're going to step in like a pair of shorts and the faja without a zipper i'm going to show y'all stepping into that it, it it's just a lot easier and it compresses that fupa area so i have on what i told y'all that y'all need to pur purchase I have on my $3 favorite Target tank tops and I changed it to black because of lighting purposes. Y'all, please don't. We're not going to talk about my hair. 
um i'm chilling right now okay we're vibing we're talking with the girls <laughs> so i have my three dollar target tank top which is this is the tank top you are going to be wearing when you put your faha i also have some shorts on but when you're right out of surgery you're not going to be wearing no underwear with your faha because you just you need to go you're going to be peeing a lot you're going to be peeing out those fluids that i talked about from surgery and um so right now i have on shorts just for video purposes and i'm gonna show you on my body i'm now was it thursday i'm seven weeks post-op now and i'm still wearing my faja 24 7 i still get swollen when i don't have my faja on um i wear my faja i don't even take two hour breaks anymore i just took them because i want to say one of the most important things if you're watching this right out of surgery or you're about to get surgery when you take off your faja you will get dizzy so faja essentials that you are going to need every process the first is going to be an extender if you are a little bit taller than the average person i'm six feet you're going to need a faja extender mommy because you don't want this to be cutting up your cootie cat this is what the faja extender looks like and as you can see i have one on here it's going to be tagged in my amazon tag it's going to be down below my amazon shop that you can buy these are like eight nine dollars they're not much and then there's another extender that you're going to need later on now you're not going to be using this one to two weeks post-op you're going to be using these babies like three weeks post when you get your faha altered and we're going to talk about this in the video as well um so let me just go over the basics with the faha like i said this is when you attach these the extenders and then this is what the faja looks like. This is a faja with a zipper. Again, you see it has no compression on the butt, so the butt area is loose. And then here is the zipper part. This faja is not altered. As you can tell, it's not altered. I will show y'all my altered fajas. Now, this is a stage two faja. A stage one faja, I don't know what happens to my stage one faja. It's the one that I'll insert a picture <laughs> that I have in the video. And you want to be wearing your stage one faja. I okay, the doctor says seven to ten, uh, one to ten days you want to be wearing your stage one faja. And I would say one to four days. Like, don't change it to your stage two faja until like four days after surgery. Give yourself a couple of days to just i don't want to say relax but go down in your swelling i changed into my stage two faja very early and i was very uncomfortable because of it i stage i turned to my stage two faja the day after surgery i do not recommend that again i do not recommend that um and this is a stage two typically a stage one faja will have a zipper on the side and it has less compression because you're going to be so swollen after surgery now one thing you want to do is start collecting your fajas when we talked about your surgery budget and i said that you need to be doubling the price of your surgery so if your surgery is six thousand dollars you need to be going down to miami with twelve to fifteen thousand dollars one these fajas gonna cost a lot i i got damn near a thousand i have damn near a thousand dollars in y'all face right now i don't know if i add up all of these fajas um and you're going to want to start your faja collection because you're going to need more than one faja you're going to need like three to four fajas at least at least and these things are running you 150 to 200 dollars each and then you got to think about the alterations faja so collection. now your faja collection should consist of different types of fajas depending on the type of surgery type of bbl type of liposuction you got so i got 360 lipo i got thigh lipo and then i got a bbl now because i got thigh lipo i had to order a longer faja to cover my thighs this first of all i can't yeah i can't fit this faja but this is a faja as you can see this faja goes all the way down to my knees this faja also does not have a zipper this is my favorite faja this is a gamma ulta faja from pretty girl curves i will link the um the website down below or you can also go to miami for this faja as you can see like i said this is going to snatch up this fupa it's going to snatch up your fupa area because it doesn't have a zipper it literally is the best also, this right here, you don't need one of those faja extenders that I just showed you. This is perfect for girls of all heights because it's like a bra strap. And as you can see, it is adjustable, which is why I love these faja so much. I freaking, y'all, I love this faja. Gamma Ulta. Gamma Ulta. I freaking love this faja, y'all. And it's so comfortable. Now, 
another thing this is i have two of these fajas that go all the way down to my thighs because i have thigh lipo right so like i said you want to have a variety of different fajas because you're going to be wearing this thing for three months so you're going to be wearing this under your clothes too when you're out and you want to be able to wear different things so i have two that go all the way down to my knee i have this one that i'm showing y'all which is a mid thigh and then i also have a upper thigh one that I got by accident because they are in the ghetto business that you should not book with gave me this um, a couple days late I was surviving off of a dirty faja I ordered another faja from them they gave me this a couple days late knowing that I had thigh lipo and they gave me this faja so now I'm able to wear it now it's all good in the hood but when I was down in Miami and they gave me this faja knowing that I had thigh lipo, I, this faja hurt me really bad because I had my thigh liposuction. So if you have your extremities like your thigh or your arm, you're getting arm lipo, don't be wearing a faja that does not compress your arms or your legs because it will hurt. It was hurting my thighs because this was not compressing my legs. Now, I have this for when I wear, like if I want to wear shorts or something um, to have a a strapless faja so get to get get a little variety of fajas just so you can um cover all your assets and wear different things with them so when you here's the rule of thumb of keeping your butt in your hips when you get your faja listen to me and listen to me closely you are going to measure your hip area your hip area your hip area is going to be the widest part of where your boot heart so you want to get super wide and you're going to measure this area. This is the area where your faja is going to um, is going to come from. That's where your sizing is going to come from. You don't want to measure. You don't want to measure your um, your waist and measure your hip and then get your sizing that way. You don't want to add its widest part measurement. You're going to stay in that size. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care how many YouTube videos y'all watch. You're going to stay in that sizes because when you're buying, you're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. When you're buying more Fajas and you're like, oh, I got smaller. Let me get a smaller size now. You got to keep in mind these Fajas, the butt part, and the hip part is going to be smaller when you get a smaller size. I came out of surgery in a 4X Faja. Well, I came out of surgery in a 5X um, stage 1 compression Faja. That's fine. Now, when I change into my stage 2 Faja, I went down to a 4X. So you should be going like one size down when you change into your stage 2 Faja. It shouldn't be no like you went from a 5X to a 3X. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> or it should be the same, um, depending on your hip measurement. But because you're going to be so swollen... My rule of thumb is one size down. Now, I still, all of these fajas are 4X fajas. <laughs> Best believe. So, when you get smaller, this is what you're going to do. You're going to get your faja altered. And um, I'm also going to show you all the foams and the boards. Now, I don't wear my foams in my, oh, not, I'm like, it looks like I was scratching my booty, but I'm not, I was scratching my lower thigh. <laughs> now, I don't wear my foams in my boards. But when your faja starts to get a bit too big and you're in the middle of getting your, uh, your fajas altered, because I know they might take a while to alter, your rule of thumb is you want to be compressed at all times. So one thing that I did find super helpful was this right here. Y'all need to go ahead and order this. This is a 360 foam. You don't have to be worrying about stuffing this foam, making sure this foam is straight, making sure this foam is straight. If you can, get you one of these as soon as possible because it will literally make life easier. If I had this one week out of surgery, like I, I would have been so, like, it just, life would have been so much easier for me. So I'm going to put my faja on two ways. I'm going to show y'all. First way of putting your faja, I'm going to show y'all this is going to be like a week out of surgery, one to two weeks out of surgery. And... What you're going to do is you're going to get some maxi pads and you're going to put, pretend this is a maxi pad. You're going to get the overnight pads from Walmart and you're going to put those on your incisions. So I only had one incision down here. You're going to take the maxi pad, you're going to put it right here. Because nine times out of ten, you might be leaking some drainage and you don't want it to get all over your foams. You don't want it to get all in your file. You don't even want it like dripping down your legs. So you're going to put the maxi pad. First, well, first you're going to get in this faja. The reason why I say I like the ones that doesn't have, don't have zippers because, like, as you can see, this is, like, short. So you got to step in the faja. 
Okay, so one to two weeks post-op, you're not going to be, be able to do this by yourself. You're going to ask your advocate that I told you to bring down for surgery. And uh, you're going to ask your advocate that I told you to bring down for surgery. And they're going to do a one, two, three pull and get that over your butt. And it's not going to feel good. I'm letting y'all know it's not going to feel good. So right now I have the faha up, right? So as you can see, I have my faha on. You're going to, they're going to do a one, two, three pull. The faha is on. You're gonna take your foams. First, you're gonna put that poise pad right here. So we're gonna put the, the fake poise pad right here. And we're gonna put, you could do one or two, and just you're gonna cover your incisions. After that, you're gonna take your foam. You're gonna put your foams like this. This is my favorite way to put it. A lot of people, they do actually put their foams, um, I started putting them horizontal but it wasn't like getting my hips so i want to tell y'all to put your foams vertical put your foams vertical if you have hip dips put your foams vertical because if you're putting it horizontal baby it's not it's easier and it won't pop up up front but it's not going to compress where it needs to compress so i was putting my foams vertical and somebody's going to help you do this and you're going to stuff this you're going to try to do it as low as possible. You're also going to take your back triangle, your person that's helping you. So when me and my mom did this, I would do the front, she would do the back, and she would do the sides. I would do one side, she would do this side. This is going to be your back triangle. Now this back triangle, we're going to go into detail. This might be a long video because it's so much. This back triangle has two sides. As you can see, it has a flat side. It has a raised side. The raised side is for when you have a lot more fluid and you need a lot more compression. The flat side is if you don't have a lot of fluid on your back. I was able to change to the flat side within like three days of being post-op because I didn't have a lot of fluid on my back. Like I had like no fluid on my back. Like there was like, sis, you ain't got no fluid. Um, so originally you're going to put this padded side. It's going to go where your tailbone is. Right here. This is where it's going to go. You're going to take your other phone. Like I said, you're going to do vertical. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just needs to be touching you. Like it needs to be compressing. So once you put your phones in, that's when you're going to put your sleeves up. Now. If your faha gets a little bit too loose and you're getting other fahas altered and this is the only faha you have, you are to purchase a little, like, purchase more foams and you can double up on foams. Like, that's what I had to do. When my fahas were getting altered and this was getting big, I was doubling up on foams and that's perfectly okay. After you take your foams and you put them in, you're going to take this backboard, I mean this backboard, this board. A lot of girlies, they might have backboards. I never had a backboard because I didn't really have fluid on my back. Um, so I ain't got no backboard to show y'all. But sometimes people do have backboards and it's almost like this. It's just made for your back. And they put that on over the foam as well. But the most important thing is this abdomen board. Okay? So when you change into your stage 2 faha, these are the things that you're, you're doing your foam and you're doing your boards. When you first start wearing this board, listen to me and listen to me carefully, this board is going to hurt like heck. You are not to sleep in this board. I don't care what nobody say. Don't sleep in this mess. Don't sleep in this mess. Don't sleep in this mess. Take this out before you go to sleep. Wear this at least for 12 hours until you're able to sleep in this board. Like I said, I changed very quickly to my stage two and I wore this board the next day. Baby, my stomach was on fire. So what you're going to do is you're going to stuff this board down. I don't care how small this board is. The most important compression part is your FUPA area. No, nobody wants a FUPA, sis. Nobody wants a FUPA. So what you're going to do is you're going to stuff this board toward your, to your FUPA. You're going to make sure that FUPA is being compressed. So I don't care if it's not, you know, up here, you still got the compression garment. You're going to take this. You're going to stuff it right here. It's going to be touching your fupa. You see, I might have a little space up here. That's okay. You got a compression garment. Then with your help, with your advocate's help, your mom, whoever you hired, your nurse, whatever, your friend, they're going to start buttoning this up. They're going to button this up. First week, I could not button this up myself. So they're going to start buttoning up the faha. And I'm just doing it real fast now because this faha is like loose. <laughs> And I do want to say right before you put on this faha, 
you are going to want to turn on the fan. Like I said before, you're going to take a break, turn on the fan, get mentally ready. And if any time you start feeling too, too dizzy, take a break because you don't want to you don't want to pass out while somebody's trying to um, put, put on your faha. And very dizzy when somebody is hooking up your faha. What you're going to do, I don't have it in my room right now, but you're going to, um, I have it in my Amazon shop. You're going to take an alcohol pad, you're going to rip the alcohol pad, or you're going to take a bottle of alcohol. You're going to do this right here with the alcohol. You're going to sniff alcohol, 90% alcohol. Or you're going to take the alcohol pad, you're going to sniff the alcohol, you're going to look up, and you're going to sniff the alcohol. You're going to do that while they're putting your faha so you won't pass out. My faha is on. And like I said, it's, it's okay if this is sticking out. It's okay. It, like, it's okay. Just not all the way out. Um, so this is what the faha looks like. You should be like, you should look like a little stuffed turkey. Now, once you are after two weeks post-op, and if, if you're lucky enough to get one of these before, this will save time because literally instead of stuffing each individual foam in and this already has a backboard too you're gonna put your triangle and you're just gonna go like this with the faha on though with like within the faha not on top of the faha i'm just showing y'all because i don't want to take it back off you're gonna go just like this it's not going to uh velcro because i got all this stuff over me but and then you're gonna actually you're gonna velcro it and this is this is the 360 foam you don't have to worry about doing each individual faha you're getting 360 compression like that's why i like this one so much this also came from pretty girl curve so i'll have the link down below for that and um then you're gonna button up your faha <laughs> or you're gonna have someone button up your faha this is like a really good investment like please get one get you one of these i, I promise you sis i promise you now we want to talk about faha alterations i talked about i talked about earlier in the video that you're going to stay with your same designs day after surgery i was in a 4x all those fahas i showed y'all are 4x so i got my this is another um this is the faha that they gave me from the horrible business they are in now this is the first faha that i got altered this is a mid thigh faha and I got this Faha altered by the Faha doctor. I will link her down below as well. You can visit her Instagram. She's very helpful. She has good customer service. She's here in Atlanta. I love the lady. She doesn't know me, but I love her. Um, and I was able to pick an accent thread, which is super cute. I picked ombre pink. She has threads that you can pick just to put a little razzle dazzle on your Faha. It's not needed. You don't have to, but I just, I just wanted a little pop of color. I wanted a little pizzazz. Um, so what I did was, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna have more than one faha, okay? If I ever find out that any of y'all have one faha, and you're getting that one faha to get shipped to get altered, like we're gonna fight. <laughs> but what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill out the form of the alterations. You're going to measure your um, your waist and your hips. And so I just measured it. Of course, you're gonna do this naked. So you're gonna do this naked to get an accurate measurement. At the time, I was a 32. So that's when I first got this faha. I was a 32 and my hips were a 50. So what I did was I filled out the form. I put a screenshot of her form. I told her my waist was a 32, my hips were a 50. What she does is she can pick the type of um, alterations that she wanted. And she usually alters one inch smaller than what you are. So she altered the first hook to a 31, then a 30, and then the like closest hook right here is at a 29. I was able to get within the last hook within like a couple of days from my swelling. Once you're after six weeks post-op, your swelling, there still might be some swelling and you still will go down because it takes, like I said, 12 weeks for your skin to attach to your abdominal muscles again after liposuction. So you're still very much moldable. So you want to like mold yourself, sis. You want to mold yourself. You want to, you want to give Coca-Cola body, Coca-Cola body. Like That's what you want to give. Um, so yeah, it's a snatch. She also asked for your hip measurements just because in the event that you have a faha with a zipper, it was very hard for me to at first get into this faha just because like I said, um, getting into this is like a pair of shorts. So you can see this faha waist is snatched. She did such a good job. Like I'm gonna have to send this back to her again to get it altered again. So my second faha that I got altered. 
So now we're going to talk about over aggressive alterations and faja extenders. I know, stay with me, y'all. Like, I, I be dropping gems in all these videos. I know they be a little long, but I don't want to keep doing a whole bunch of videos. This is the faja video. So <laughs> now, over aggressive faja. I would recommend doing your faja over aggressive. I didn't realize how fast I would get down to the third hook when she altered my faja so i put on the note instead of doing one inch smaller than my waist girl can you do two inches smaller than my waist at this point i was already like five weeks post-op and i was like girl like <laughs> it is what it is so once i got this faja I have the zipper it's easier to get into this faja it has this lower fupa um what's it called so this is my faja that i wear now i'm probably going to take everything off and show y'all after about four weeks i stopped wearing my foam and my boards you don't have to wear your foam and your boards after four weeks um if your skin can take it i did give myself a little faja burn because i thought i was gonna be superwoman and i didn't want to use the extender like so don't 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 do that <laughs> don't do that so when she altered my faja right now i'm on the extender at first i was all the way at the first one now i'm at the last hook for the extender and as i am able to get actually get on the garment i will take the extender away and i will just do the um the garment of course this one of course i picked another color i picked eggplant for her to alter and um yeah so these fajas i want to say when i ordered this was this like 196 from pretty girl curves to get it altered cost me 128 because i tipped her of course uh so each alteration is like 128 the faja itself is like 150 to 200 uh 196 one one hundred dollars to two hundred dollars it's gonna run you a faja to get it altered is like a hundred dollars so just know that this is an investment it is literally like a money pit and i will tell you stick to your budget please stick to your budget so that is everything with the fajas as far as there's stage three fajas i would not recommend getting into a stage three faja just getting your stage two fajas altered i'm not buying a stage three faja one because they're not comfortable two because some of them are made of, out of like latex and that like hard material the girls be like oh i got the little turbino or whatever faja like girl no just get your stage two fajas altered and you will save money on having to buy a stage three faja and that stage three faja, if you're like in the summer healing like I am, well, it's like March. I'm not walking around in no latex like faja with no rods. Like I'm just not doing Like I'm just not doing it. Especially if you have to wear fajas under your clothing. Just keep getting your stage two fajas altered and it will literally be snatched like a stage three. I'm about to show y'all what I look like in my faja without my foaming boards. But honestly and truly, you should be wearing your faja so much that it's not comfortable without your faja and it's okay when people are like oh you need to wing yourself off your faja if you're before three months you don't need to be weaning yourself off the faja if you're after three months and you still wearing this thing 24 7 i'm like okay sis like <laughs> wing yourself off the faja a little but if you're under three months don't listen to people when they say wing yourself off the faja that faja needs to be your skin that thing needs to be your best bud okay so this is what my stomach looks like I don't know if I can see, but this is my body, and I'm seven weeks post op today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off these shorts and put this hot on. <laughs> I'm seamless panties and uh, or no show panties and or. So as you can see, this you see how this faja opens up. This faja opens up because it doesn't have a zipper on the crouch. I haven't seen anybody talk about this. But y'all need to be buying this faja, okay? Opens up like this. So much easier to put on. So, so now I put it over my butt area. And you just want to make sure that everything is squared away, like, under here before you start actually trying to, like, button things up. This one doesn't have a zipper. So what you're going to do is, I know it sounds crazy. What you're going to do is do a little squat. So I'm going to turn to the side and demonstrate. You're going to sit back a little like this. And as you can see, I have my extender right here. But as you can see, once you get this first notch, please, I know it looks crazy. I have underwear on. <laughs> um, this flap is going to like get tucked under. But because I have the extender, of course, the flap is not going to cover all the way through, which is okay. That's why I got my underwear on. 
once you have the first hook everything just gets better from there and like I said like I have an extender on and I'm just gonna work my way up the faha I don't have the fan right on right now just because of um, audio purposes but I still be getting hot putting this on and just take your time like now I'm not faint or anything so I'm not in a rush uh -huh. Child, not one of the button things. I don't care. I'm not about to uh, fix it. So, <laughs> this is what the faja looks like. And what you're going to do is you're going to tuck the crotch area. But like I said, you're going to see a little bit of my underwear because of the extender. This is what the back of the faja looks like. And I'm comfortable. Like, I'm able to breathe in my faja, sleep in my faja, eat in my faja, dream in my faja whatever um so yeah thumbs up this video if you found this helpful visit my bbl playlist if you're thinking about getting a bbl or have gotten a bbl don't forget to